Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday, and on today's episode, we're gonna debunk the 10 biggest swimming myths that we hear all the time. Now, if you swim, you know that swimming is an amazing form of fitness for your mind and your body. It's low impact and great for people of all ages. Unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation out there, so today we're gonna to talk about what these myths are and what the truth is behind the myth. But first, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Now the first myth that we hear all the time is that you have to be in really good shape to be called a swimmer or to even start swimming. And this is 100% false. It couldn't be further from the truth. The only place you see the, the physique of a Greek god is on TV at the Olympics for a swimmer. You actually never see people that look like this at the swimming pool. Sure, there are people that are in amazing shape from swimming, but swimmers come in all shapes, sizes, genders, interests, and they're a part of the community. So if you swim and you're in the water, don't feel discouraged because you don't look a certain way. People are all shapes and sizes, and so if you swim, you're part of the swimming community. Now the second myth that we hear all the time is that you can't lose weight from swimming. And again, this is 100% false. You can absolutely lose weight. Swimming is an incredible form of exercise. You're moving through the water, which is 800 times more dense than air. You burn more calories swimming than almost any other type of physical activity. If you can control your diet after you swim because you spiked your metabolism, you're going to lose weight. It's just a simple fact because you're, you have burning more calories than you're consuming. That's the simple formula. Make sure you check out the awesome interviews that we've done with Mike who lost over 100 pounds swimming with the My Swim Pro app or Karen who lost over 110 pounds swimming with the My Swim Pro app following structured workouts and being on a consistent schedule. You will be able to lose weight if that is your goal. Just make sure you're consistent with your training, with your workout plan and check out the My Swim Pro app. Uh, you don't sweat when you swim. This is something that we often hear from swimmers and non-swimmers, thinking that because you're in the water and your body's cooler, you, you don't sweat. And the reality is you do sweat. Anytime you do any type of aerobic activity, any fitness that elevates your heart rate, your body is gonna get warmer and it's gonna sweat to cool itself off. The difference is when you're in the water, it's a little bit harder to notice just how much you're sweating. And actually you can become very dehydrated in swimming, so it's always important to hydrate before, during, and after. Hydration is super important even in swimming because you are sweating even though you're in the water. Now, another myth that we often hear is you're supposed to hold your breath when you swim. Now, obviously, when you go underwater, you can't breathe, we don't have gills, we can't breathe the water. But people think that when you go underwater and you swim freestyle or anything at all, you're supposed to hold your breath, and the reality is that's not true. You're exhaling continuously, and the more comfortable you can be with this continual exhale, the better. Because if you hold your breath underwater, what happens is your body builds up CO2, carbon dioxide, and that's actually gonna cause you to feel gassed and out of breath. So for a new swimmer, you can feel really you know, overwhelmed and gassed if you just hold your breath. So the way I recommend a beginner swimmer, even a more advanced swimmer, to overcome this feeling of, of helplessness when you're in the water holding your breath, is to simply hum, blow out the bubbles, get comfortable blowing out at a consistent stream, start where you can stand, gradually lower your face underneath the water, and just blow bubbles and hum and that's how you're supposed to swim all the time, not by holding your breath, continuous exhale of oxygen. Uh, you should wait one hour after eating before you can swim. And again, this is completely false. Uh, the reasoning for this myth is people think when you eat, all of your muscle and all your blood cells is going to your digestive tract, so that way you can digest the food. And the reality is that's true, but as soon as you start exercise, whether it's swimming or any other activity, the blood goes to your extremities, it goes to your hands, it goes to your arms, your legs, where the, where the big muscle groups are, and your digestion is basically put on hold until you complete swimming or whatever activity it is that you're doing. So the myth that you have to wait exactly 60 minutes or 120 minutes after you, after you eat before you can swim is not true. Now, there is a lot to be said about eating a big meal immediately before swimming or consuming any type of alcohol. Save all of that stuff for after you swim so that way you can build up your metabolism and then you can enjoy the rewards of swimming and working out after. So eat the big meal after you swim. Now, our sixth myth is that clean water equals 
uh, clean, clear water equals clean water. Meaning if you go to a pool and it looks spotlessly clean, or if you're in the open water, more importantly, and the water looks really, really clean, it is clean. And the fact of the matter is that it actually couldn't be further from the truth because you can have a clean looking pool or body of water that is actually very dirty and contaminated on a microscopic level. Now this is relevant because you need to check the water if you're at a pool, listen to the pool staff if it's closed, it's closed for a reason. If the open water, the lake or the ocean is closed at that particular beach, uh, it's closed for a reason. So make sure you look up where you're gonna swim so that you know you're always in safe water. Chlorine turns your hair green. Ah, that sucks, right? No one wants their hair to turn green. Some people do, but it's fine. If you, if you don't want your hair to turn green, people think you should just avoid swimming. The reality is chlorine does not actually turn your hair green. It is the copper sulfate, which is in a pool or body of water that turns your hair green. You actually can't escape the chlorine. Even in a saltwater pool, there is chlorine still. So the way that you can minimize the, the impact of the sulfate and the, the copper sulfate and even the chlorine, which does dry your hair out, is to wear a swim cap so it eliminates, not eliminates, but it reduces the impact of the chemicals in the pool, and also just rinse off in the shower after you go swimming. Uh, the eighth myth is that peeing in the pool is harmless. Everyone, whether you've done it or not, you know someone who's peed in the pool, and in fact, it probably isn't harmless for you yourself doing the deed, but it can contaminate the pool because urine is a contaminant and the chlorine that's that's in there to fight off bacteria has more to fight off because you're introducing a whole new contaminant into the water. So don't treat the pool like a toilet. Use the toilet for toilet business, use the pool for swimming. This public service announcement has been brought to you by my swim pro. Moving on, uh, number nine, if you did not learn how to swim as a child and you learn as an adult, you're pretty much helpless and you have no hope. You think you're never gonna be able to get better because you didn't do it as a kid. Now this is completely false. You can learn how to swim at any age. You can improve at any age. And that's one of the awesome joys of swimming. Swimming is so dependent on technique, more so than anything else. And if you didn't learn the technique as a child, you can still learn it as an adult. And in fact, there are actually a lot of benefits to learning the technique as an adult, because you're an adult, you're smarter. You can mentally engage with what you're doing, listening to instructor, watching a video, following a structured workout, much better than you can as a child. Now, are you going to go to the Olympics if you start learning how to swim at 25? It's unlikely. However, you can still become an awesome swimmer, and we know tons of swimmers who've gone on to become uh, nationally competitive as they learned when they were an adult. Number 10, swimming with equipment is cheating. Oftentimes you hear this with fins. I don't want to swim with fins because that's cheating. Or you know what? It doesn't count because they swam with fins. Uh, that is completely false. Swimming with equipment, whether it's fins, paddles, snorkel, pull buoy, whatever, is actually a better workout because it engages more muscle fibers. Your body is more stimulated in the water and that increase in muscle engagement actually increases your intensity so you get a better workout. So instead of saying swimming with equipment is cheating, swimming with equipment should be encouraged because it gets you a better workout, better fitness, better performance, if that's what you're into. Um, and a good rule of thumb is to keep about 50% of the workout with the equipment. Now you said, well, is that cheating if you go more than, well, no, but the best impact for your body is starting out with no equipment and then gradually layer, layering in the equipment as the workout progresses so you can engage more and more muscle fibers. When you swim with the equipment, you're able to swim a little bit faster, a little bit more muscle engagement, and that will give you a better workout and better performance. Now I know this says the 10 myths about swimming, but there's an 11th that I wanna introduce. The 11th myth is that swimming continuously will maximize your workout. This means swimming nonstop. Like you go to the pool and you swim 1,000 meters, or you go to the pool and you swim 2,000 meters, 40 lengths, 50 lengths, 100 lengths, and you just go nonstop. And that's the best way to get an aerobic benefit of swimming. Now this is couldn't be further from the truth. That is not how you improve your technique. It is not how you improve your fitness. If you do it every now and then, it will improve your fitness. But there is nothing like doing a structured workout. A structured workout will always be better than nonstop continuous swimming. And there's two main reasons for this. Number one is that it allows you to swim at a faster average pace. So if you take a break rather than swimming continuous, the individual segments of swimming are actually average faster than what you would do if you swam continuously. 
The second, which is related, is that you'll be able to swim with better technique because you only have to sustain the improved distance per stroke, the catch, all the different technical elements for a shorter period of time. And these two reasons together is why a structured workout will always be more impactful than just swimming back and forth. Now, there's nothing wrong with swimming continuously and swimming back and forth. If that's what you've always done, that's totally cool and it means you're getting a great workout in. But you can get an even better workout if you add some structure. Here's a really quick example. Let's say you average 1,000 meters swimming continuously and you do that three times per week. It only takes you 20 minutes to do 1,000 meters. That's great, maybe it takes you 30 minutes, doesn't really matter. If, if, you do that same period of time, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and instead of doing 1,000 continuously, you do, let's say, 800 or 900 meters, a little bit less, in the same amount of time, but you add some structure. So instead of going you know, 20 lengths in a row, you're gonna go two lengths or four lengths, you take a break. Two lengths or four lengths, you take a break. Maybe you incorporate additional strokes, whether it's individual medley, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, you incorporate some kicking, a little bit of equipment use. That 800 or 900 meter workout will be more beneficial, you'll get a better fitness impact and definitely a better performance impact than if you just swim the 1000. And then for me, my favorite, it's more mentally engaging to swim with more variety. So if you want more structure, and we have a different Whiteboard Wednesday specifically on workout and set structure following interval training so that you're using the pace clock. If you have a smartwatch, you can take advantage of that with the MySwim Pro app. If you're interested in learning more about how to structure a workout and finding a training plan that's like you, check out the My, for you, check out the MySwim Pro application. We have tons of different training workouts that are personalized to your skill level and helping you reach your fitness goals so that you can get the most out of your time in the water. So that was the 10, make it 11 myths that we debunked about swimming. If you have any more myths, make sure we hear them in the comments. We would love to hear them. Also be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. We'll catch you on the next Whiteboard Wednesday. Happy swimming, bye.